Hi, I'm Jennifer Jo Cobb. I am the driver of the number 10 Think Realty Chevrolet in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. I'm one of the very few drivers that also owns the team. And not only do I own the truck I drive, but also a teammate. I have, I have two trucks. We are a, what they call a two car team or a two truck team. spot they're going to right now on the racetrack that is a it's developed into a huge bump just so you know yeah it's a big rough spot uh brad commented about last run too it's it's i mean it's tearing skirts up splitters up and there's like the racetrack coming apart It'll be interesting to see what they do as they're going to drill a relief hole to get started here oh my gosh i was thinking they need to get a bigger drill but actually they don't there's, there's that anything much like pressure that. oh my gosh there. Yeah. look at joey, <laughs> joey tracks. Tracks. Yeah. i don't think i've ever seen anything quite like that nope that was my first lap out there i thought the track was coming apart and uh apparently it's something to do with water and uh, we took a really big saw to it <laughs> look big at concrete that. saw that, there is a river flowing underneath this racetrack that is amazing look at all the water coming out of there when it rains which we do not like because there's just so much uncertainty you have to be on standby ready to go at all times but that gives me a chance to get my computer out and do some team owner duties the funny thing is when it rains at the kansas speedway i actually grew up two miles south of the Speedway. Now I live two miles north of the Speedway. And so I was able to do some business on my computer. And as soon as it stopped raining, then I could buzz over to the track and get ready to go race. Rain delays, you know, they're, they're a pain because you, you can't leave, you can't go anywhere, I guess unless you live two miles from the track. <laughs> because you know once it stops raining, it's going to take a good 45 minutes to two hours, depending on the racetrack, to get it dry. We're here today to enjoy the race. I've been a uh, race fan for as long as I can remember. We came out to support Jennifer Jo Cobb and the Think Realty Racing Truck in the Camping World Series. This is the first time I've ever been to a race, and so I'm excited to see what it's all about and uh, support Jennifer, and hopefully she can get a win. I've done the ride-along experience, hang out in the pits, and just get to be around it all. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jones. I work for Think Realty and I am super excited to be out here at Kansas Speedway today for the Think Realty truck race to support our Think Realty truck and Jennifer Jo Cobb. It's going to be an exciting day and I'm looking for some exciting racing. To me it's exciting. I like the smell of fuel and rubber and so this is, this is what it's all about to me. The number 10 truck's got to win tonight so that's why we're here. I was born in Kansas City, Kansas. When I was three years old, my dad started racing locally at the grassroots level. And I grew up going to the racetrack with my parents every weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, April through September, we can be found at a racetrack. Of course, my dad was my hero, so I wanted to be a race car driver. And when I turned eight years old, I told everybody, hey, I, I want to race. And they kind of shook their heads and laughed at me. And I was in ballet and dance and gymnastics and so I grew up a real girly girl, but had a passion and a love for racing. When I turned 18 years old, I had my first opportunity to actually drive at a half mile asphalt oval in Kansas City, Kansas called Lakeside Speedway. Today it's a dirt oval, but for 10 years it was asphalt. And I raced 10 years at the local level. And when they built the Kansas Speedway in 2001, a new passion ignited that told me that's where I wanted to be, at the big leagues of NASCAR. This was impossible because I had no money, 
I did not come from a family of famous racers. I didn't know anybody in the NASCAR world. And of course, you know, being a girl, people kind of wonder how serious they want to take you. So it was important for me to study business and marketing and sales because the only thing keeping me from racing was the money to do so. So I set out on a journey to find partners and sponsors and to perfect that process, which I'm still looking to do, and, and to find out what, you know, what makes businesses sponsor NASCAR or any sporting event. And I had some success and God put the right people in my path to help me along the way. And for nine years, I chased sponsorship to race maybe once or twice a year. And in 2010, I had the opportunity to own my own race team. I had help with funding and I searched harder for sponsors. And the next thing you know, I'm racing full time at the big leagues of NASCAR at 37 years old which is usually when drivers are thinking about retiring. Typical race day means there's really nothing typical about it, <laughs> but sometimes they have us qualify, practice, and race all in the same day, and we're literally up at 5 or 6 a.m., practicing at 9 a.m., qualifying at noon, and racing at 8 p.m., and by the time we load up and, and get back home, it's well after midnight, and so those are some really monstrous days but your adrenaline kicks you through it, that's for sure. Um, a little bit more palatable race weekend for us is uh, like the day before we show up at the track, we do inspection, we get our hospitality set up for our sponsors, and we practice. What's nice about that is we get to then go back to the hotel, debrief about the setup, get some input from other teams even to find out what they learn throughout the day, and come back the next morning, make changes to the truck, qualify, and then race. Our VIP guests are our sponsors, and they're anywhere from individuals who have sponsored us to, you know, multi-million dollar corporations. And our sponsored guest experience is really important to us. We are an underfunded team, so we don't have the best engines, we don't have all the tires that we need to go win the race, so it's very important that the people that come watch us have a great time. So we provide a lot of great food, hospitality, um, you know, a contact person if you have any questions, and we like to provide a, you know, once in a lifetime experience for people. It's something very different. A lot of people that come visit us aren't even race fans, but we hope that when they walk away, they're now a race fan. And I have a not-for-profit called Driven to Honor, and we give that VIP race experience to a female military member and her guest at every single one of our NASCAR races. So that hospitality and guest experience is a very, very important part of our mission. NASCAR 101. And in NASCAR, money by speed. And everybody knows this. If you're if you're a fan of this NASCAR, everybody knows that money by speed. You've got a piece of equipment that costs the same piece of equipment. One costs fifteen thousand. The other one costs fifteen hundred. And the and the difference is one's very light and very strong. The other one's very heavy and not as strong. So the heavier one will will not be as fast as the lighter one. So you can spend. $1,500 and get so much speed, or you can spend $15,000 and get a lot more speed. You know, a few times this year, we have had something go wrong with the truck after we take the green flag. And it's really frustrating because you're ready to race, you're, you know, you're, you're in the show, you're all amped up, ready to go, your sponsors are all there in the pit box uh, watching and cheering you on and especially Kansas being a hometown track. And then whenever you're racing, you start to feel a part left loose or something is failing or letting go. And you really have no choice but to pit, go behind the wall, fix it. You want to be safe. You want to keep your truck safe and you want to keep your competitors safe. So you go 10, 20 laps down to fix it, but you get back out in the race and you finish it. And a lot of people say, well, you know, if you can't win or if you're that far behind from the beginning, you know, why go back out there? But you never know. We actually advanced several positions through the race, and that's what I like about having really long races, you know, well over 100 laps that last a couple hours, because you just don't know how it's going to play out toward the end. From Kansas City, Kansas, Jennifer Jo
In NASCAR racing, of course, you want your pit stops to be well under 20 seconds. The, the top level guys are 12, 13 second pit stops. And my guys are all really new and learning. I always joke that we're a learning institution. And our pit stops can afford to be a little bit longer, but I'm really feeling the rhythm. I can't really see them. I don't really watch them. So what I'm doing is I feel the truck being jacked up in the air on the right side. And so I know that my job is to hold the brake and hold the steering wheel straight so that they can get the front tires on properly. And then when that jack drops and they run around to the other side, um, that's when I actually put it in gear. So I'm holding the clutch, I'm holding the brake, I'm holding the steering wheel, I'm getting a drink of water. So I kind of got a lot going on in there even though it looks like I'm just sitting still. And then you're waiting to hear the command that it, you can go. We had a situation where the truck actually fell off the jack and it's devastating because you know you know that anything that you've gained on the racetrack or anything that the, the guys have gained on pit road is now lost. They all rush to help teamwork to get the truck jacked back up, to get the tires on so that I could get back out and race. But the worst part of it is that those bodies are really hard to fix and so it ended up costing us thousands of dollars of repairs just over one tiny mistake. You know, the biggest advice I can give to someone who wants to come to a NASCAR race and have a really great time is to get a scanner. When you have a scanner and you can rent them at the racetrack if you don't own one, then you can listen in on our conversations. So you can hear what I'm saying, the feedback I'm giving to the crew chief. Every once in a while, the language gets a little bit colorful, but I try to keep it as clean as I can. And you're just really, it's a, it's a soap opera that evolves over a couple of hours of time and you really get to listen in and be firsthand on the journey. And this year for the first time NASCAR has allowed any fan anywhere around the world that can download the NASCAR app, but you can listen to the communication for every race. You know, when I started racing full time in NASCAR I was just overwhelmed with gratitude. I had worked so long at it and you know, I always woke up with pinch me moments. And I wanted to do something to give back. And so we have a limited amount of these free VIP behind the scenes experiences for every race. And I wanted to celebrate other women who are in male dominated fields. I see how hard other women work and what they have to go through. Some of the same challenges that I have had to go through being in a male dominated industry. So I wanted to give back in a way that celebrated them. And that's how Driven to Honor was born. I hope you enjoyed your day at the races with us as a VIP behind the scenes. If you'd like to join us, email me. My email is right on my website at jenniferjocob.com or you can follow our journey on social media. Facebook, we're JJC Racing. Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, it's at Jen Joe Cobb.